Hello, and welcome back to Hemophyte Breakdowns. Today, I want to talk about another grappling exchange. Uh, grappling exchanges are something that you don't see quite a lot in Hema, uh, generally because grappling is either not encouraged by a tournament rule set or outwardly banned. But all the same, it's in the sources, and it's a very important piece of uh, technique that you should know how to do, or at least know how to defend yourself against. Because when you get into those situations, people who know grappling are able to dominate that area where everyone sort of knows how to swing their sword. Most people just don't know how to grapple. So if you know how to grapple and they don't, it's a great way to get a leg up on someone who honestly might be better than you at pretty much everything else. But for now, we're going to watch the exchange. We're going to watch something, a very basic grapple play that I think everyone should know how to do because of how effective it is. <laughs> So what happened there is, as I've said before, every single time you missed a thrust, which I did, uh, it's grapple time. And the reason for that is that this bind is because of this bind right here. This bind where both your hands are basically touching each other, both your and your opponent's hands. And you have long since passed the point where your tips are of any threat. In a situation like this, you have two choices. You can attempt to pull away from the bind and try to pull your hands back and deliver some kind of cut. But the problem is, is that it's just as quick to do what my opponent here does, which is simply attempt to throw your arm over both of your opponent's arms at once. Now, one thing that I like about this exchange, is it shows one of the ways in which this technique can look like it goes wrong, but still work perfectly fine. And that's right here. When the second my opponent puts their arm over both of my arms, I have a foot planted and I basically pick them up off of the ground because the structure that I have is just too strong. Uh, but it really doesn't matter because the second you get your arm over the top and you bring the weight down, what you can do is, and you can't see it here because of the camera angle, uh, basically scooch your weight of your arm and your body down towards the sword, towards the end of the arm and the wrist. And what that does is it... It takes you from a position here where a lot of the weight's on the inner arm and on my elbow and scooches it down to my arm where it's you have a superior, uh, superior point of leverage. Once you wrench the arm down, the great thing about this is that because of the natural interaction of a left arm going over a right and a left arm, I can't really pull my sword out. It's just not possible. Even if I could maybe let go with my... Uh, left hand and try to defend myself, it would be an open hand with no weapon attempting to defend myself from a cut. And that's really the important thing to point out here. When you go into these grapple situations, cuts, I believe, are predominantly the first thing you want to try to do. And generally, there are three different situations that you could put yourself in in a grapple. One is you're trying to stab, aka you're trying to pull your arm back as far as you possibly can so that the length of the blade can land on someone else's target. You're trying to pommel them in the head, which basically requires the same setup as a cut. You basically free up your sword, bring your hand up in the air, and you bring the pommel back down. Or this cut. And the reason I like the cut the best is because it combines the two best situational uh, positions that you can get from both the pommel and the thrust. Thrusts land well from grapples because when you naturally pull your arm all the way back to try to free up that tip and give it the space that it needs to land, you're naturally keeping it away from your opponent. So assume that my left arm here is desperately trying to grab my opponent's right arm. The further back it is, the more impossible it is for me to grab it. This left arm can be pushing against me, zoning me out, keeping me at a distance from the right arm, giving it all the space and time and area that it needs to deliver whatever attack it is. The problem with the thrust, though, is that that tip has to get right up against me. And a left hand might not be able to grab the right wrist of a person trying to stab you in a grapple, but it can most certainly slap the blade out of the way. And just like as I said before, when you miss that stab in the grapple, you've basically given up that arm. You have to put in some forward pressure in order to really properly deliver a stab, and the second you miss, you're going to put your right arm right back into reach of the opponent's left arm. 
allows them to grab it, wrap it, and turn what was a losing position into a neutral position. The pommel has a similar problem. You pull the arm away to try to deliver the pommel, but in order to bring it down, you have to bring it down at an angle. And most importantly, you have to bring it down with what is essentially no more than a few inches of extra reach off of your original arm. Basically, it's like trying to hammer fist them, but you have a little extra five pound brick in your hand. The problem is, is that it's pretty easy for someone who has one free arm to just put up their arm in defense of that pommel, take 99% of the energy and force out of that pommel strike, and just, again, wrap it back up and turn a losing position into a neutral position. But there is one situation that that free left hand can't protect you from, and that's a cut. If you do exactly what my opponent does, pull that arm back just like you would for a pommel or a thrust, and instead drop your weight and drop the edge straight down. The best part about this is that if I put my arm up to block, it doesn't matter. That edge still cuts my arm, same as it would my head. It's I can't stop it like a pommel and I can't beat it away like a can of thrust. But best of all, if you miss a cut, you are not in a position of uh, being wrapped up and being made neutral like you would be if you missed a pommel or missed a thrust. Because even if you do miss that cut, you can pull your arm back again and get ready to do it again. You can do it as many times as you need to. The entire time, the person with their presumably free left arm can only, again, same as before, desperately try to grab onto your right arm. And thanks to the distance created by pulling it back, they're only going to be able to put it in the way of any subsequent cuts. Once you're done cutting somebody in, and missing, hopefully, you can transition to something else, but generally pulling it back and going for another one is perfectly fine. All right, that's all for today. If you'd like to see your own footage featured on the channel, feel free to give me a, an email over at hemophytebreakdowns at gmail.com, and I hope to see you next time.